Good morning and welcome to lesson eight of unit two, intellectual property. We're gonna be talking about copyright, which you may have heard the word or the term copyright at some point in time. Copyright, of course, is the exclusive legal right to print, publish, perform, film, or record literary or artistic or musical material and authorize others to do the same. So it's the, it's your, it's the right that you give others and the right that you have. So let's take a look at a couple of quick things. So first of all, do you think this is fair? You take an awesome picture and someone puts it on their social media account and with your name next to it. Do you think that's fair or not so fair? What about you write a story and someone else publishes it and says they wrote it? Fair or not so fair? How about you write a song and someone sings it to her friends? Fair or not so fair? You write a song and someone sings it at a concert and makes a lot of money. Fair or not fair? And do you think this is fair? You take a picture and someone else photoshops it and puts a new version on his website. Would you say that's fair or not fair? Now, based on whatever you responded or however you responded, what rules would you make for people who want to use your creative work? Okay, that's the overall question. What rules would you put on this? Okay, what kind of rules protect everyone's rights when we use each other's content? So that is what we're going to be talking about today. So let's go on with the lesson. Today you're going to have a um, activity guide that looks like so, and this is licensing your work. So there's a video that goes with this. It is in um, code.org's unit two, lesson eight. You need to watch that. Um, so watch it, please. And now would be a good time to pause my video and go watch that video. All right, so now that you've watched the video, um, you're gonna be doing this activity guide to help you understand uh, what rules are out there, okay? The Creative Commons license helps content creators explain what other people can do with their work. The Creative Commons license has different parts that you choose from to say exactly what is and is not allowed. For each part of the Creative Commons license, give a reason someone might want to use it. So, you learn about attribution. Others who use this work must give credit to the original author. Why would someone use that? Non-commercial. If you need to go watch the video again, that's just fine. Non-commercial. Others may use this work for advertising or to make money. Why would someone use that? Share alike. Users of this work must share any new versions under the same exact license. And no derivatives. Users may only use this work as is and may not make any changes. So it's gotta stay the way it is. Nope, you can't make a meme out of it. That's okay. Other options. 
As you look at Creative Works Online, you will see other ways to publish works. You can always read the instructions to help you better understand what is allowed and not allowed for that creative work. These are just a few of the other examples. Now, think about it in terms of what is the least restrictive, okay? You want to be thinking about what is least restrictive because you want others to be able to use it, but you got to think about what is um, the least restrictive way to do it. So, GNU free. You can use the work how you want, but you must publish any new versions using the same license. Okay. Pixabay license. Don't use the work to make people look bad, spread dishonest information about things, or sell exact copies of the work. And then public domain. Anyone can use the work in any way they want to. Why would anybody use those? Oh, don't be afraid to look it up and why people would use those. Um, use your resources. You can Google that, that sort of thing. But uh, anyway, so choosing the right license for each of the scenarios below, identify the Creative Commons license that best meets the needs of the content creator and explain why you chose this. Now, for this, you're going to be... Um, asked to evaluate each of the four provided licenses is the which of them is the least restrictive but still addresses the concerns and needs of the content creator okay what do they need what is it that they are looking for maybe they want to get their names out there they just don't want people to make money maybe they just want to get their name out there and they don't care if people make money by it just because it will give them an opportunity to be seen and then they can restrict it more later on. That's really a big deal, actually. And then down here in the image hunt, you're going to go online and find two different images with two different licenses. Describe the image and license in the chart below. Okay, so you're gonna find some images, whatever images you want, and identify the licenses under which they are published. Um, because we can't know which sites might be blocked. Um, so here's some places to look. Um, not all search engines make it easy to set Creative Commons filters. Some of the easiest include search at Creative Commons. Do a Google image advanced search. Go to Wikipedia Commons or Flickr Creative Commons. All of those work just fine and have um, various licenses on their work. All right, so those are some places to, to, uh, to do some searches. And as you close up this lesson, I want you to be thinking about um, some of the photos, drawings, or written work that you've created in the past, or even the website that you're making. Without a clear license, all of those things are covered under the fully restrictive copyright. Which Creative Commons licenses would you rather use, if any, and why? Now, be thinking about this and not in terms of, okay, I just want to, it's all about making money and I want to license my stuff. Because remember, right now you're not making anything, any money off of anything you write. At some point in time, you will, um, in the beginning, you want to get your name out there and get your ideas and your work out there for people to see. And it, if, if Microsoft has to pay to use your stuff and you've never and you don't even have a name for yourself yet, then they might not be interested in using your work. But over time, it can be more beneficial um, to show people and give your work out for free, just as long as people don't change it or whatever. Maybe you want them to change it. Um, maybe you just want them to use your name. And uh, that's pretty low restriction. Um, just give me credit. So. Anyway, um, 
be thinking about in levels of, it's important to think about it in levels of uh, restrictiveness. The more restrictive, the less they're going to be able to use it. The less restrictive, the more they'll be able to use it, and the more your name will get out there. So <clears throat> that is lesson eight. Remember, there's a video of unit two, uh, lesson eight, unit two. There is a video that you must watch. If you avoid it, you won't. None of this will make as much sense as it should. So um, that's that. Remember to strengthen your problem solving each day by solving your own problems as best as you can, seeking help when needed, and you are in charge of your own happiness. So we'll see you later. And thank you for joining us for lesson eight of unit two. I hope that you now as you th hope that you had a good time. Now, as you wrap up, think of photos, drawings, and even written work that you've created without a clear license. Which Creative Commons license would you rather use, if any, and why? And that's the end of lesson eight. Thank you. Have a great day.